heck is that? Wonders, oh wonders of the world. So many wonders to behold. So many questions in my mind. So many questions, so little time. Answers so so easily come. Unless you know to ask someone who is a master of the trade. Ask them how clouds get their shape. Welcome to What the Heck is That with David Shaventura. Welcome back. You are watching part two of my interview with Heather the Dancer. Make sure to go back and watch part one if you haven't already. How did you get involved in music? Ah, uh, well, um, when we dance, we're often dancing to music. Not always, but often. And so I think since I started so young, I was very much introduced to musicality um, right from a very young age and listening to the classical greats and then being exposed to all different genres of music. Um, and when I was about 12, I got accepted to a program in New Jersey called the Summer Arts Institute, which is no longer there, but it was a wonderful program. And I was the youngest one that year and it was really four weeks. And it was my first time getting exposed to working with people in different art forms. So there was dance and music and theater and um, all sorts of different things. And so I learned about collaborating at that point. And that was really exciting to me. Oh, we can all work together and uh, create beautiful, magical things. And so um, I think I started with music very young um, and I, chose my instrument as the instrument that I wanted to, to work on and train as opposed to learning piano or uh, flute or violin or guitar or drums or any other instrument. Um, and then as I've grown, I've always loved performing with live music. So I've personally sought out different experiences and opportunities in companies that work with live music. So whether it be opera companies or philharmonics or bands or things like that, I really enjoy being on stage with with musicians at the same time whenever possible i think for people like you and me heather we just have always had music inside of us i think you're absolutely right david it's just with us from the beginning and uh and we love to be a part of it and share it can you tell everyone what music is and how you got involved? So I know that you are a huge fan of music. And music is led by a woman by the name of Rachel Warby. And it creates live accessible music experiences. Um, and it features curations that are smart and eclectic sort of um, mix of artists of different genres, so music, um, and then different disciplines. And then on top of all of that, the curations and the, the mix of artists, it's done primarily in spaces that are unusual that you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, a music concert should be here. Um, and so it really pairs with the community in finding uh, partnerships in locations to make music happen in. And then as far as my involvement in that, um, I worked with Rachel as a teaching artist many years ago when she was the director of, um, the music director at the Pasadena Pops. And so when she started music, we we're in our ninth season this year. Um, when she started music a few years in, uh, let's see, it was her fifth, this is my fifth year there. Anyway, um, so Rachel invited me basically to come to music and join, uh, and join the team there. And I've been there for five years. I can promise my watchers that it is a truly amazing experience. Thank you, David. We always love having you out there in the audience. How do you get into teaching dance with people who have special needs? Right. So um, 
I got first introduced to working with dance and special needs um, in my senior year at college at the Boston Conservatory. I was planning on doing a choreography concert and a colleague, uh, Sarah Beckford, approached me and said, hey, I want to do a movement program. I want to create a movement program for the blind. And at the time I thought, wow, that's like amazing. I would love to be a part of that. So I joined her and we at first did not get very much support from the school, but we had a wonderful instructor by the name of Kayla Kazan Zalk. And um, she believed in us. And so we worked diligently to learn and, and study and research and craft and play with Movement for the Blind. And eventually we're able to teach at the Perkins School for the Blind, the Carroll Center for the Blind, and then also um, we created a program for sighted people to sort of understand or have an experience of, of maybe what being blind might be and how it feels in your body uh, when trying to move. And so, yeah, that was my first experience with uh, creating dance for special needs. And then it kind of always just continued. When I moved to LA, I worked with a company who also did outreach and I for special needs specifically and I worked with them for 10 years and then in 2013 I started my own organization which of course you are a part of uh, performing arts for all and so I I think it's a really fun way to explore movement and to be inclusive of all bodies and how everyone moves I think dance is really amazing um, humans are like kind of the only animal that you think of that move in so many different rate, ways. Like if you think of a, you know, a big cat, you know, and, and you know they're, they're attacking, like you can imagine how they move. But when you think of humans, we move in so many different ways. And um, I'm just fascinated by that. So um, engaging the special needs population just seems a, a natural part of that. That is such an inspiring journey and eventually brought us to the end. I agree. I remember the day I met you and your mom. It was at a, a special needs fair and uh, your mom came up to the table and spoke with me. And who knew we would be still dancing together? It sounds you it sounds like you have worked on so many projects over the years. Do any of those stand out that you can tell us about? You are right. I have worked on a lot of different types of projects. I've been very, very lucky. Um, I think for myself, I love having the opportunity to be in spaces that are sort of historic that are drenched in in history of the arts and so um performing at lincoln center performing at the hollywood bowl um there's so many but that's that's sort of one thing just to stand and know so many great performers have been in that space before you um it's a very special feeling um but i do remember the first time that I, I was driving, it was kind of before everything was so uh, cell phone busy. And, um, and I was driving down the 101 to go into Hollywood and I drove past the Hollywood Bowl and my name was on the, on the marquee there. And it said, Heather Lipson, actress, dancer, for a, a production I was doing with the, the Los Angeles Philharmonics, uh, Young People's Concerts, uh, Symphony uh, Fantastique. And it was amazing because we weren't actually performing it at the bowl. We were performing it at Walt Disney Concert Hall, but they advertised their season at the bowl. So I was just driving along and then saw my name and stopped and pulled over and had to grab a camera, an actual old camera. I didn't have a cell phone camera and <laughs> took a picture. And, um, and I'll, I'll make sure to share it with you. But um, that moment of just sort of being like, whoa, that was really amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I think just performing in all different places. Uh, I got to perform on 42nd Street. I know they just did a Broadway production performance because all the Broadway houses are shut down at the moment. But years and years ago, when that was a, not a normal thing, they shut down 42nd Street to do a Disney production and I got to perform on the street. I remember being like, we're literally dancing on 42nd Street. That was pretty amazing. Um, anyway, lots and lots of amazing opportunities and experiences. I am glad you took a moment to think back on those. Your experience is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very fortunate and 
I think that those experiences, you know, they bring you together with so many different people. I've gotten to travel, you know, internationally and even the Hollywood Bowl experience introduced me to my partner, uh, Tom Dulac, who I've now partnered with on, gosh, many, many, many shows. <laughs> and, um, and so I've, I'm just very grateful. You have had so many great opportunities and I bet you have learned about that so. Many styles of dance. What are some favorite for you? Favorite styles of dance. Um, for me, ballet is my heart. It's what I started in and when it's almost like breathing to me, like standing at the bar or standing anywhere and doing plies and tendus and sort of the regiment uh, sequence um, from a ballet bar is, is like being at home for me. Um, but of course I love all styles of dance because I, again, like I'm fascinated by all the ways that the human body can move. Um, for, for me personally, um, probably more of the American styles resonate best with me, modern, contemporary dance, jazz, you know, or musical theater style, um, tap. Um, and then I also have, have found over the years that I, um, I really enjoy um, history, like period dances, whether it's the swing air or further back Baroque dance. Um, I've, I've had the wonderful opportunity to study and train a little bit with the New York Baroque Dance Company and, and all the wonderful staff that they connect you with. Um, so kind of I think there's my favorite styles and then there's sort of my favorite learning about the styles and the roots of the styles, um, flamenco and fusion and Indian and African and all sorts of styles. I just think, um, I don't know, picking a favorite is really hard, <laughs> but ballet is my base and my heart, so. That's a lot of styles to keep up with. It is, and if you know, I'll keep introducing you to all of them every week at class. <laughs> I never stop teaching you guys the same. I get excited by one and I love to share it with my classes. So, um, so you get to have those experiences as well. Tell me a little about the work you have done for moves and commercials. Yeah, um, I have had a lot of little opportunities to work on films and TV and commercials um, as an actress, as a dancer, as a choreographer, as a co-director. Um, and in each role, um, you learn and do lots of different things. Um, and I think, you know, with film, when you're performing on a stage, you're presenting to the audience in front of you. Um, Occasionally, you'll have the opportunity to perform in the round, which is a theater, excuse me, a theater piece um, on a circular stage where the audience is literally all around you and you kind of have to play to all of them. But in general, theater and dance are presented, you know, with the audience in front of them. With film, it's a lot more uh, versatile. You can have the cameras be in all sorts of directions. And instead of maybe seeing the whole movement, you might say, I want the camera to just see some little piece of something. And so um, you can really explore dance in a different way. Um, but really at the heart of it, it's always the storytelling, whether it's the dance or the acting, it's how are we gonna communicate with the audience that story that we wanna share. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I love working in film and TV. It's really always a unique experience and, um, and I'd love to keep doing more of it. We can work on an animated film together. That's one of my dreams too. Animated films, yes. Those are, I actually, when I moved to LA, I was like, I'm going to choreograph for animation. And I had no idea how animation worked. And I didn't realize that most of the animators gener they generally study choreography or they outsource at the time. They were you know, internationally uh, sourcing um, choreography. But yes, I would love to work on an animated film or a project with you anytime, David. I love to perform, so I am curious to hear about your favorite performance you have ever done. Oh my gosh. Favorite performance I've ever done. You know, I don't know if anyone can answer that question. <laughs> there are so many uh, when you've been doing it as long as I have, and there's things that make them special, whether, you know, the, the space you're in or the costume that you got to wear or maybe the director or some 
the choreographer that you've always wanted to work with that you've got to finally, or just so many different things. But, um, but I will share with you that there was one show that changed my life. Um, I had a friend who uh, was going to set me up with a, a young man. And so we arranged a blind date and it was set for after a performance that I was doing on October 7th, 2000. And so this young man came to the show and he watched the show, not knowing which of the young ladies on the stage he was going to meet and take to dinner after. And it turns out that 20 years later, that was my husband. So that show is very special to me, um, not because of the choreographer or any of that, those are important fun things but because i met i met jeff so yeah thank you for sharing that story with us you're welcome who is your favorite student who is my favorite student that's a you know probing question mr david <laughs> um i Oh, it's hard. I love, I love teaching. And so, um, you know, anybody that's willing to, I like to say, can you try this on? So it might feel awkward or embarrassing or horrible or hard, but if, if a student is willing to try something new and to play and to focus and to work hard and, and give it their all, then, then they kind of become my favorites. <laughs> but, um, um, years ago, I took a master class with Renee Robinson of the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, and she shared with us that she was learning as much from us while teaching us as we were from her. And that idea has really stuck with me, and I try to include it in all my classes that, that I'm sharing with you, but at the same time, I'm learning from, from my students just as much. Um, and then, of course, I would be remiss to say that my two favorite students um, I have to say they are my children. I have two young children and I homeschool them. And so they're probably my favorite students. <laughs> oh, come on. What about me? <laughs> okay, I will say it. David, you are my favorite tallest student. No, how can I say it? David, you are my favorite. How do I do it when I do it with my kids, right? You're my favorite oldest. You're my favorite youngest. David, you're my favorite. Um, you are one of my favorites and you have left a huge impression on on me as a as a teacher and as just a person as you do with everybody that meets you um and that i know of <laughs> so um i appreciate you very much david thank you thank you miss hada you're welcome david wow and i think i had known you so long but learned so many new things about you today i i really thank you for letting me look back in time and all these fun things that i've done i forget that you all don't know who i who i was before you met me so it's been a real treat to uh to take this time with you thanks miss hada thank you david What the heck is that? Wonders, oh wonders of the world. So many wonders to behold. So many questions in my mind. So many questions, so little time. Answers so so easily come. Unless you know to ask someone. Who is a master of the trade? Ask them how clouds get their shape.